I think there are, there are two points that I want to sort of emphasize. One of them is that the major super cycle that we've been in uh, really started l the last one in the early 1980s when interest rates and inflation peaked at very high levels and we saw 25, 30 years of consistently falling cost of capital inflation and interest rates. But that period was also supported by very aggressive supply side reforms in economies, privatization, deregulation, lower corporate taxes, uh, the collapse of the Berlin Wall and the Soviet Union, bringing down global risk premia, and of course the move towards globalization. And I think we are moving clearly into a different super cycle one in which some of those factors can no longer be relied on in the same way. We're not likely to see interest rates trending down as aggressively over the next decade or so. We're seeing some pushback to globalization. Uh, and of course, we're seeing increased geopolitical mm. tensions uh, as well. Having said all of that, while those things should leave uh, a lower pace of returns across financial assets, relative to those in the last decade or two. Mm. As you say, there are some very other significant drivers which could be very positive. The combination of AI and its impact on productivity, but also decarbonisation. The two very different drivers, but both of which uh, over the medium to longer term can be actually pretty supportive. Well, we were talking about decarbonisation from the copper story on Friday, that there mm. could be a copper super cycle coming. Yeah. But when we think about just the AI story first up, because that is the one everybody's focused on, some argue that, look, we're still in the foothills of this AI story, even if, though you've got huge valuations now in some of these AI stocks, there could be more to come because we've just scratched the surface on the capabilities here. What do you think, given you're now talking about the super cycle? Mm. I think we are in really relatively early stages. We're in the innovation stage where the technologies are commercializing uh, and becoming leverageable. But what we have not seen, and I think we will see a lot of in time, is new applications and services that are really based off these new technologies. And that's really when you tend to get the positive impacts coming through and the broadening out of its effect across the equity market. I would say the second thing is we haven't yet seen, and I think we're relatively positive that we will see, an improvement in productivity on the back of the applications of AI, which could be positive for growth and of course for margins. And I would say thirdly that although we have seen tremendous gains in some of the companies that are seen to be at the epicenter of these technologies, they're not really that expensively valued when you compare them, for example, to the dominant companies during the tech bubble, during the Nifty 50 bubble in the early 70s, during the Japanese bubble in the late 1980s, and they're already much more profitable. So I think this is a story that can run and have quite a big impact for still some time to come. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.